this is Marcus from yakcountry.com. So I wanted to round out this Google Earth series by covering some some basics on what I look for when I'm using Google Earth to scout. So just a disclaimer, so I use Google Earth as more of a pre-scouting uh, event. So I'll, I'll, you know, pan, zoom, tilt through Google Earth until I find a few areas that I really like. And then what I usually do is I'll put boots on the ground and I'll go check out these areas because Google Earth will give you a perspective of what the area and give you a potential area, but there's a lot of things you can't see from Google Earth that um, boots on the ground, that perspective really gives you. So I'm going to use the same generic area that I've been using for my past videos um, just as an example so I just arbitrarily just chose this area it's not somewhere I hunt or anything like that um, so there's three main criteria that I'm looking for when I'm using Google Earth and that's one is it huntable so typically I'm hunting on public land um, if I have permission for private yeah I'd take it but um, I don't so or I don't typically so here I'll use the BLM layer that I had showed in a previous video of how to add and I can see here this whole area is Forest Service land okay um, I can see there's state land there's BLM land but this main chunk pretty much all huntable property so I can make that go away um, you know, if I needed to, I could check what region it's in or what GMU it's in. Um, so I know I know that area is huntable. Uh, this primarily this mountain range in here. Um, two, I'm looking for seclusion. So is it going to see a lot of hunting pressure? Can I get away from the weekend warrior type hunters? Um, is there a lot of roads that kind of stuff so um, if I look in this area this this isn't an area that I would necessarily pick to hunt um, reason being is I've got what five six trailheads here I've got one two three four five six seven seven campgrounds um, and you know just that that density you know the fact that there's seven campgrounds in this area and that many trailheads it leads me to believe there's going to be a lot of traffic um, so that that would usually tip me off as well eh, maybe I don't want to hunt this area but it is a rather big area so I'll neglect that for for the time being um, another thing I'm looking for is are these uh, pictures that get tagged on here. So you see by the density, you know, I wouldn't want to be hunting down here because likely it's easy access. Um, I can tell that because it's close to the road, and I can tell that because there's a lot of pictures tagged down here. Whereas up in here, there's l maybe less. Uh, well, there are less pictures tagged and likely less pressure. Um, hunting pressure so I look for the density of those um, I zoom in a little bit <clears throat> another thing I'm looking for is roads you know are there a lot of roads or ATV trails in here that make it easily accessible to everybody um, I can see here this one you know there's a few roads but not a whole lot in between these uh, couple sets of trailheads so I would think this center region would be fairly secluded not a whole lot of pictures um, tagged and not a whole lot of roads it's also a wilderness area if you look a little bit closer um, so the next thing I, I kind of look for is, all right, 
before I look into where I'm going to hunt, I'm going to look at where I'm going to park. So I've been using this example, you know, throughout all my videos. And if you zoom and weigh in, you can see this is another reason why I probably wouldn't hunt here. So there are, well, it looks like three pickups there. This picture was taken um, in June 2014. So I can see there's three pickups there in June, I guess, as they're fishing. Um, but I've got one parking area, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, like seven uh, camping areas, or excuse me, parking areas. So that's a big red flag. There's probably going to be a lot of people here. But again, for this example, this video, I'm going to, I'm just going to pretend like there's just a little turnaround or something like that. Um, so yeah, so if I zoom out here, um, you know, next thing I'm going to look for is habitat that supports, you know, elk or mule deer or whatever I'm hunting. Um, and make sure I can find some habitat that looks good, that looks promising anyways, that I could potentially hunt that is fairly secluded. So things that I look for is, you know, water, especially with elk. Um, I look, I like to hunt areas that have a lot of seeps and a lot of streams and creeks and s springs poking out. Uh, I like I like areas that are pretty green. I'm also looking for saddles or bowls um, or basins. Um, another thing that to kind of give you perspective of the terrain is to look at you know if there are these pictures, um, which I don't think there's any good ones around here. But um, if there are any pictures tagged, you can kind of get an idea of what the terrain looks like and what the habitat looks like. So, those are just a few things that I look for. Um, once I kind of locate in an area that I think looks looks promising, um, so like this for example, I know there's a hiking trail that goes up here. So if I add the uh, topo map overlay, I can see there's a hiking trail. I can create a path. Oops. Start it right there. And just kind of follow this all the way up. You can see here it's a wilderness boundary. So that tells me, at least here in Colorado, that it is roadless. Or no motorized vehicles off off-road. So I did this in the last couple videos is creating a path and I kinda did it like this. So a couple areas that I think look promising are this saddle in here we got a water source we got a saddle or at least a, a relatively flat spot so on this side here this is uh, this will be south facing so you can see here is my north south so that's a south facing relatively steep ridge um, which potentially could support you know some bedding areas Typically, I like to have a, a steep and deep north-facing slope, um, but north or south, typically you'll you'll if if the area is holding elk, you can lots of times find elk in there. Now, granted, when I zoom in here, you can see a lot of that steepness is covered in rock, so. When, it, when I'm looking for 
an area, a bedding area, I'm typically looking for thick timber, something like this. I can also tell by the terrain, um, some of the vegetation. So I can see all this is beetle kill, this is kind of brownish. I can see all this green here that's likely aspens or um, kind of like a scrub brush. So that looks like aspens in there for sure. So anyway, um, you know, a couple areas that just kind of poke out for me is this saddle in here. You know, there's a few areas if you kind of look up, you got some aspens kind of sprinkled throughout here. You got a nice ravine up there. You got a nice flat up there. And if I look over here, you know, it's fairly gradual. This is a nice looking ravine. It's got some, looks like some rock slides of sorts, gravel beds. And it's not too close to the road. It's also, you know, a fair distance away from the other side. So that that's somewhere, you know, I, I would potentially scout if, if I liked what I saw. Um, Again, I probably wouldn't scout out this area just because of the the parking area um, and the density of campgrounds and trailheads and all that kind of stuff. So, just to give you an idea of what I look for and how I kind of look for it. Um, and then what I would typically do is I would, you know, place some, put some place marks in there. Um, of potentially where I'd want to set my camp, maybe where I'd want to cut off of the trail. So here's my path. So say I wanted to cut off the trail, I could put a place mark in there, I could take these coordinates and I could input them into my GPS. So that I knew as I was hiking in, even if I was hiking in in the dark, I would know this is roughly where I want to start heading heading up um, so yeah that, that's just a you know a rough overview of what I look for a few things um, again Google Earth in my opinion should be used as like a pre-scouting almost so identify areas where you potentially want to scout um, I know that doesn't make sense for a lot of people. A lot of people, you know, don't live in Colorado or wherever they're going elk hunting. But that's that's kind of how I use Google Earth is to identify, you know, a plan A spot, plan B, plan C spot, and then scout them out in that order. You know, if I'm seeing elk in, at plan A spot, typically I don't go check out plan B or C. So, um... Anyway, that's kind of how I use it. Uh, be sure to check out my blog post. I go into a lot more in depth of why I'm looking for huntable area, why I'm looking for seclusion, and what kind of habitat, and why I'm looking for saddles with, with a water source, that kind of stuff. So check out my blog, yakcountry.com. Um, yeah, God bless. Happy hunting.